Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide. Uh, a lot of good stuff inside of the game, honestly. You have a lot of different technology that you can use. Uh, the DLSS, for example. So we're going to start by optimizing Windows. And after that, we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar. Go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is, sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32, just divided by two. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game.
So now inside of the game, go to video. The first uh, option that you have is your field of view. And yes, it will impact your FPS. So don't go too crazy with it. Start with something like 90. Do the whole guide. After that, if you have like decent FPS, you can definitely uh, put more field of view if you want. For your resolution, I recommend to go native. So depending on your monitor, just use your native resolution. Make sure that your screen mode is at full screen. Super important. It will uh, help with stuttering. Uh, V-Sync, I recommend to go with off. But it really depends of personal preference um, if you have free sync g-sync just use that if you just want to unlimit your fps because you want to lower your lag input go with that uh, if you don't really care and you don't like screen tearing just use v-sync but you will add a little bit of input lag in your game for performance, you have some upscaling technology that you can use. For sure, if you have access to DLSS, just go with DLSS. So put this one at on. Make sure that your NVIDIA reflects low latency also is enabled. Uh, after that, for the frame rate, uh, me, I just play unlimited. But if you have issue with your thermal, sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS with the amount of Hertz that you have on your monitor. So if you have a 60 Hertz screen, just lock your FPS at 60. You have two type of fidelity FX uh, super resolution that they add. I'm really uh, confused with this one. You should definitely use the, 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 the second version. Go with something like balance or quality. On uh, my a a Radiant card, I, I got like 15 and sometimes 20% boost in my FPS in uh, balance mode. So that's pretty good. And honestly, it's well implemented in the game. I recommend to go sharpen on if you put some anti-aliasing. The anti-aliasing in this game, I'm not a fan. Uh, honestly, it's, the game looks blurry, so that's why I just go with off. Uh, also, you will gain 5% in your FPS. If you really want to use an, uh, an anti-aliasing, go with FXAA. You will only lose 2%. But if you feel that your game is blurry, definitely activate your sharpen. Ray tracing, honestly, uh, it will just tank your performance, so don't use it. Uh, if you're watching my guide and you have a decent card, I recommend to go with DLSS plus ray tracing. It's a really good combination if you have like a powerful computer and you can do a lot of stuff with it. So honestly, it's working well if you have those technology. After that, for the advanced graphic, the ambient inclusion, uh, if you compare high to off, you can expect an 8% boost in your FPS. Honestly, if you're playing on a laptop with an integrated GPU, you should definitely put your ambient inclusion at off. I know the game looks flat. If you don't like this, just go with low. Uh, it will help you a lot with your frame rate. Light quality, you can go with medium. Not a huge uh, difference between low and medium. So that's why I'm putting this one at medium. Volumetric fog quality, this one is huge. If you compare a low to extreme, you can expect a 16% boost. So definitely put this one at low. Depth of field, I'm not a fan of this effect. You don't want to use that if you want good visibility. So put this one at off. And the global illumination, I recommend to go with low. After that, for balloon skin surface scattering and motion blur, just go with off. You can expect a nice 4% boost in your FPS with those. And motion blur, you don't want to use it because... Uh, again, visibility, you don't want the blurriness when you're moving and stuff like that. Screen space reflection, you have two different options. I definitely recommend to go with off. If you have a decent card like a 1070, something more recent, you can play with medium, not a huge impact. But if you have like a very old GPU, an integrated GPU, this one will tank your FPS. Lens quality, I recommend to put those one at off. Lens flare also at off. For all those uh, parameters over there, first of all, I want to mention if you have like a very bad CPU, you're playing on a Core Duo 2, something like that, just go min minimum with Max Ragdoll. It will help a lot. I recommend to start with this. And after that, look at your FPS. If your FPS are stable and decent, definitely you can go uh, higher with decal, lifetime, max blood decal also, even your max weapon. So maybe just go with something like uh, mid... Uh, mi Maybe just go with something in the middle in your slider and look at your FPS. This is pretty cool. You have the flexibility to, to do some testing. Uh, on my RX 580, honestly, I can easily move those slider at medium or even a little bit higher. So, uh, But again, depending on uh, what 
is good in your computer and what is bad. So if you have a bad CPU, look at the description. As you can see here, significantly increase CPU usage. So lower this one. So just adapt it depending on the hardware that you have. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my uh, Warhammer 40,000 guide, Dark Tide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.